Okay, it's blown. Sounds like a bag of nails. folks so welcome back to another video yes i have got a totally dead audi s38 p behind me there's quite a lot of stuff to get through in this video because everything was unexpected this month has been a bit crazy i mean i blew up a gearbox last week and now i've totally blown up an engine we have got quite an important announcement as well towards the end of the video so make sure you stay tuned for that but i think what we'll do we'll begin with a bit of story time right okay so the s38p as you can see behind me three door pre-face lift as you know i do like a good old cheap vw group project car on this channel and that's what that is is at the lower end of the market in terms of our s38ps are i paid 4600 pounds for it and yeah i've actually had it five months since february it's crazy how time flies but yeah i've managed to keep it out shot somehow now you may be thinking why is it taking me so long to show you guys this car what have i been waiting for well essentially the car has been broken since day one and i basically just parked it there and i was like okay i'll sort this out later on then the e60 m5 arrived and i was doing all that content so i bought the car from coventry which is about a 45 minute drive i found it on facebook marketplace went to view it in the morning checked it out all seemed good and I decided to come back later in that day to collect it and I drove it back. Now bear in mind I have had a few Mark V GTIs with the TFSI engine and I have seen quite a few other bad examples so I know what to look for but nothing in those two sort of bits of exposure I had on that day to this car basically threw up as a red flag for me. Everything went wrong later in that day when I finally got it home and I decided to take it around the block for a quick drive. Now I'll just do a quick little rundown of this car and some of the common issues you will expect with the TFSI engine. So as I said, this is a pre-face lift. It's a 57 reg. They only came in three door and it's also a manual. Um, pretty basic spec in here. It's got black leather, but for the most part, they really care. It has got, oh look, it's got needle sweep, fancy. 147,998 miles, so not too much. Similar sort of thing to my Edition 30. The engine code is a bit different. It's a BHZ on these early S3s. They changed to the CDL later on, but for the most part, they all had the same issues, stuff like the cam follower, the PCV, you got the oil pickup pipe, and the oil pumps can go bad as well, which is what I think happened here. So getting onto that little drive that I did, as I said, got back home all fine. I think it was around seven o'clock, left it for a few hours to cool down, literally. It was parked here, everything was all sweet. And then it got to about half nine, and I was like, you know what, let me take that S3 out for a little blast. I feel like having a bit of KO4 fun. So yeah, there I was giving it through some gears, took it around a few roundabouts. I was like, this is pretty great. Coilovers are sound. I think it's probably got some further handling mods because it was better than I thought. And then on route back, literally I could see my house, like I was on the same road and bang, oil pressure light comes on. And I did pretty much stop straight away because I was so close. So I managed to just about get it into my drive and it was fine, turn the engine off. So now I was like, okay, great. We've got a pickup pipe situation here, most likely. And that's where the car basically got parked up since then. I just left it as it was. And now fast forward to a few days ago, I got the car out. It was basically parked in that gap right there. And I made a start on it all, got the parts. And I did film all of this. So what I'll do, I'll run those clips now so you can see all of that. And then we'll get onto what happened after that. Right, okay, so the S3's up on the quick jacks. It's nice to be using these again after a long time. Now, to begin with, we're gonna keep things relatively simple. We're gonna change out the oil pickup pipe, which is this thing here. It is known to get clogged, and that's how you blow your engine. Uh, usually, again, oil pressure light come up beforehand, and it tells you to stop. And if you don't stop, you likely will cause a lot of damage. I somehow have avoided that, but we're gonna change it anyway, because I reckon it is fairly clogged. And in addition to that, we're also gonna be changing out the cam follower. So this is in the high pressure fuel pump. Now there is one more thing, which I forgot to get out on the table. I'm pretty sure it's here on the driver's seat. It's a set of NGK spark plugs, the classic BKR7 EIXs, if that ever focuses. I had these spare from when I was doing the Edition 30 build. They've never been used, so it's gonna come in handy today. There you go. Get some of these out in the meantime. So that's nearly finished draining. Remove the under tray as well. We've got the oil filter over here. It's that pretty much unscrews off like that. And there's a little valve. Let's get a little torx in there. Fair bit of oil came out of there, to be honest. More than I thought. Not a very scientific test, but let's have a look. 
it's obviously going to be black. It's definitely a bit worse than I thought. Now next we can move on to removing the sump which is held on by a number of little 5mm allen head screws there which you can see along there. They look pretty easy to remove but there are a few hidden ones. And I've been recommended to get this which is a ball headed allen head socket. We'll need to undo a few extra things like the oil level sensor, the turbo sort of feed pipe at the back there. The boost pipe there which is also attached onto the sump. Yeah, so there's one there, there's one there, another one there, and another one there. The rest are all along the edges, nice and straightforward. Oh wow, the ones that are hidden away aren't even tight. Much easier with this, I've put on like a extension screwdriver, whatever you call it. Crack them all off rather than ratcheting away. It gets quite tiring. Time to see what this pickup pipe's gonna be like. Surprisingly though, there's not actually much in the pickup pipe. I mean, I might be able to get a better look once I take it off. It's held on with these Allen head bolts here. Now that it's at this angle, I can see there's a bunch of stuff there in the mesh. This over here looks like there's some debris as well. So this was definitely worth changing out. All right, a quick little side-by-side -side comparison with the new one. As you can tell, that's all immaculate. Now that is leaking there, which isn't ideal. I don't know why I did this, but the lighting over there was pretty poor. But this is the little seal that you want to put on the end there. Now that that's drying out, you can see there's one. Uh, you got to buy this separately, but just make sure you do it. Probably won't be able to see much because there still is a fair bit of oil in there, surprisingly. This is obviously the sealant around the edge. Okay, so sometime later, I managed to clean out the sump. Also wiped this mating surface here, so most of the sealant is gone. It's not perfect, but it should do the job. I did remove the level sensor before I started with all of this. It's got three T30s on there. It's a little electric connector. They want to blast out with water. And I have put on a new drain plug and torqued it down. Now, next we need to apply some new sealant. So I've gone for this, which is the Alring Durco HT. Apparently this is the advised one. Need to be careful not to put too much on, but I'll get to that in a second. In terms of over here, I have also cleaned up these mating surfaces as well. There was a bunch of sealant on the edges. All of it looked like that pretty much, so all of that's gone. And also I fitted a new pickup pipe with a little green seal on it. I'm not gonna lie, this dispenser is pretty rubbish. It doesn't allow you to get a smooth sort of consistent line. It keeps stopping as you go along. It's not perfect. Right, so all of them small bolts are in holding the sump up. I need to put those 16 mils back in. Uh, but all we need to do now is put the oil filter back. So we'll have a quick look at the condition of it now. Definitely looks overdue for a change this. It's all bent. It does seem to be a bit of gunk in between the fins as well. Also need to take out this O-ring. And this is a 36 millimeter socket on the end there. Right, so pickup pipe's all done so we can finally stop rolling around underneath there and move on to the engine base. I need to remove this engine cover stroke intake. Now, quick little reminder, if you are enjoying this video so far, make sure you go down and click subscribe. Definitely helps a lot. So four coil packs, nice and easy, all in sight as well. I've got this little wiring harness that we need to undo. Next, pry these out. Seem okay, they're a bit crusty on the other end. But coil pack is something you only change when it actually goes wrong. Now the socket you need is a 5.8, just like a Mark 7. And also an E60 M5. I know there's no real correlation, but they all share the same spark plug socket. Not overly tight. All right, so the first plug doesn't look fully obliterated. Threads are a bit black there. Tip isn't crazy or anything. But interestingly, it's got a BKR 8 EIX in there. All looking pretty burnt up. There's a new one I just got out of the box. Uh, seven EIXs as opposed to eight EIXs. Yeah, we'll get these in now by hand first. I'm gonna talk these all up to about 24 newton meters. I reckon that should be enough. Coil packs back in. That was pretty painless. All right, so moving on to the last bit of preventative maintenance for today, we're gonna change out the cam follower, which is behind this, which is the high pressure fuel pump. For the most part, it's pretty similar for most cars, apart from the very early ones where they have like a banjo fitting. You do wanna try your best not to break this at the top here. I have got one of these fancy VW group clip things that you put in like that. And then you bust up your nail at the same time. We've also got three T30s, which I do recommend you replace. I've got it in the kit as well. And we have got a little valve at the end here, which you can sort of bleed off excess pressure. Okay, so next you're gonna undo 
that over there so looks to me like a 17 mil so if you look this is what the 17 mil is screwing onto that and it basically holds these two together that sits in there you just need to take off the three t30s now this bottom t30 might be a bit difficult to get out well looks impossible with this anyway so instead of trying to round it off and make things worse just undo this it comes off yep quite a bit here we have our cam follower basically sits on the camshaft now looking at this it doesn't seem too bad it's definitely been changed at some point there's a few little scoring marks there but let's have a look at the camshaft doesn't seem too bad so we're okay there's a few little light marks there but nothing that's going to be sort of detrimental to the car at all and there it is side by side with the new cam follower so the black coating is still pretty much on there for the most part now when putting this thing back in you want to get a bit of the oil that's sort of just chill in there and um, put it around it essentially I should go straight in put equal pressure on it and don't put pressure on that top thing and there we have it one reassembled high pressure fuel pump with a new cam follower right so that's all the maintenance bits done for this video anyway all we need to do is put some oil in the thing what we'll do we'll put in four first and then add in as we go along because we can just check on the dipstick legit the oil that came out was like tar there's no other way to describe it even these birds seem to be agreeing what the noise they're making so four liters is kind of halfway on there so my point a bit more okay so that's showing as perfectly just underneath the max there so we'll go with that we'll start cranking it now okay coil packs unplugged and we're gonna give it some juice because the car's dead now this should allow it to just build up some oil pressure rather than letting it run dry straight away for a few seconds Get it circulating. Okay, S3 beeping at me saying brakes. Shush. Four on the clutch. Ooh, that sounds pretty good. Not any worse than most of the size. I mean, what do you guys think? Right, so now we should be able to see what the normal idle is like now the cold start's finished. Pretty smooth for a TFSI. Okay, so it's been about 25 minutes now. The car seems to be warm. I've not had any weird noises or anything funny like that happen. So I think it's mostly been a success. Give it a few revs. So as you saw their pickup pipes all done cars running fine sounds very smooth in the video even after the initial situation months back and then i decided to take it out for a little drive in the evening thought i'd try my luck again now that i've done the maintenance and the pickup pipes all clear and there's fresh oil in there got around the block all fine i was like okay let's get it onto a dual carriageway it was fine on the first dual carriageway then i arrived at like a motorway service station i thought you know what let me just get a quick coffee did that it was all charged up and as soon as i left said service station i headed onto a dual carriageway and i thought you know what let me give it a bit of a boot in second through to third wide open throttle and i did that and um it was pulling good got halfway to third and all of a sudden the car went flat it was almost like it had a boost leak so i didn't think too much of it now at no point during this pull was there any indication of there being an oil supply issue there was nothing on the dashboard it literally felt like the car was slightly down on power but on something like a tfsi it could be something as simple as a dv which i haven't even checked it could be an early revision but literally within a matter of seconds the engine started rattling and simultaneously our good old friend the oil pressure light popped up on the screen it was so bizarre i've never had that happen before it gave me no warning there was no way to sort of save the car and yeah that's what you're seeing in these clips next so don't worry it's not the case where i didn't pull over because the oil pressure light was on it literally just happened bang and it was gone okay it's blown sounds like a bag of nails it's already gone so i don't want to stop here let's have a look yep toast it is smoking a bit as well so yeah s3 is dead i even gave it a clean legit perfect until i planted it at uh, certain speeds okay sit rep just waiting to be whisked away in this bag of nails which doesn't turn on at all 
farmer over there has got his tractor out. I just had to explain to him that my car blew up at a certain speed and I can't exactly move and I'm waiting. I think that's the recovery driver there. Beaches recovery. I just spoke to the driver and he said he's got an S3 and 8L, which he keeps locked away in his garage, nice and tucked away. Probably should have done the same with this, although I don't have a garage. Definitely a nice truck that. It was just so odd that it gave no warning. Usually when like a pickup pipe goes, it'll tell you and you just stop over and you can salvage the car. But I think in this case, it's the oil pump that failed. I haven't had that happen on a TFSI yet. And maybe it could have been salvaged if I did like a balance shaft delete when I did the pickup pipe. But I thought, no, let's stick to normal maintenance and see how it goes. But who knows, it's all guesswork at this point. It could be something really silly that failed. We'll get like a teardown video film, strip down the engine. And that's all gonna be happening at Artec Performance, as you will remember, our good friends in Nuneaton. So we did a bunch of Mark V content there. They're like the TFSI experts. There's no one better than them. So we're gonna get it there, hopefully at some point soon and uh yeah we'll see what's wrong with it right so that's the s3 story in a nutshell i feel like we've explained it in pretty good detail and we'll hopefully get some resolutions out of it in the coming days and weeks but i think it's time we finally get to that announcement that i mentioned at the start of the video i'm pleased to announce we're launching a patreon for the channel now as you know most channels out there have got their own different thing going on whether it's merchandise car raffles different websites and for the most part i've never really sort of contributed to it or been part of it there's no real particular reason i've just basically kept the channel purely about cars and you know teaching you guys about various things whether it's a review or different modifications but i think going forward with the amount of projects going on i think it's time we do something like patreon because it just allows those of you who want to be more sort of tuned in to have an extra sort of bit of knowledge or place where we can discuss more i mean a quick example of that is this s3 i've had it months and i've known about the sort of basic issues it had but no one knew about it the reason for that is it's sometimes best with youtube to wait until you post a full video before telling anyone because on a platform like patreon i could let you guys know for those who really want to know and yeah, we could have a chat about it before anything goes live. Now to begin, there's going to be two tiers. Both of them will have the same content, so no one's going to be secluded. The second one is just if you fancy supporting the channel a bit further. Don't take this as me trying to force this Patreon thing down your throat. It's not that at all, it's just for those who want to be a bit more involved, like I said. Now I'm going to be posting very regularly on there and it won't just be like status posts and polls and discussions. There will also be extra video content that never made it into like full video cuts. There's a lot of extra stuff I film that never really makes it into a video idea, but it's always cool stuff to share. I am a one man band, so bear with me, but we'll definitely do our best and create like a nice little tight knit community over there of just pure car stuff. But yeah, folks, that's the announcement. The Patreon is already live as this video has gone up and the link to it is down below in the description so i'd appreciate you go ahead and check that out if you feel like doing so as i said there's no pressure but yeah i think this is a good time to end this video i'll probably ramble far too much drop a like if you enjoyed it subscribe for a lot more content to come all the youtube stuff will be continuing as normal i'm sure you've noticed i've been uploading a bit more regularly but yeah i'll see you in a few days time